Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm talking about how much RAM you actually need for video editing and does more RAM equal faster editing performance. Now, about a year ago, I started to invest uh, what parts actually make a difference in video editing. You can spend a lot of money on a computer and not get great results, or you can build a balanced system that's gonna edit really well and not cost a fortune. So in this video, I'll be using uh, some RAM you guys see right here, and I'm using the brand new 2015 iMac, which of course, uh, Apple computer, is same exact parts as a Windows computer, just with different operating system. And I'll be using both Final Cut and Premiere Pro, and with Premiere Pro, I'll be using both OS X and as well as Windows installed in this computer to get uh, kind of a broad range of results to see uh, what we get and how it performs. Uh, so this is a 32 gig kit. The iMac already has eight gigs that it comes with. So I'll be doing eight gig. I'll be doing uh, 16, 24, and 32 to see what kind of differences we have. So let's get into the video. To start off, I wanted to use Bruce X, which is a benchmark made for Final Cut X to see how fast the system is. Now results vary hugely between an iMac, an older generation iMac, MacBook Pros, stuff like that. There's a big difference. You see that all the setups got 17 and a half seconds. The difference of RAM did not make any difference of uh, rendering and exporting time with, uh, with Bruce X. And this exports to ProRes, uh, so it's just a full hardware use. Let's get into the video editing results. With eight gigabytes installed, Final Cut takes nine seconds to stabilize a 20 second 4K clip. Moving over to Premiere Pro, you see that it takes four minutes and 54 seconds with OS X and six minutes and one second with Windows. So it's running faster on OS X and uh, that's just our baseline. So now let's take a look if we're gonna get any fast results if we move up to 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs of RAM, we have still nine seconds there on Final Cut. Premiere Pro, you see that we have basically the same time in uh, OS X and in Windows, we have just a slight speed increase, basically not noticeable. Moving to 24 gigabytes, still same result with Final Cut. With Premiere Pro, we do have a gain in both uh, OS X and Windows running Premiere Pro, a slightly larger gain on the OS X side. And finally, with 32 gigs, you could see it doesn't make a difference in Final Cut, still nine seconds. With OS X, same result as the 24 gigabyte. And with Windows uh, running Premiere Pro, we actually get a little bit slower back to the same result as 16 gigabytes. So from these tests, the 4K stabilization, which is just rendering inside the actual uh, program, there's not much of a difference that we see here. We get a little bit faster, but it's not much of a performance gain. So let's go ahead and look at some actual uh, video exporting and rendering at the same time. This next test is a five minute 4K clip and it has two LUTs and film grain applied. Looking at our baseline 8 gig, you'll see that Final Cut gives us 6 minutes and 34 seconds to render and export. Uh, running Premiere Pro on OS X, we see 14 minutes and 53 seconds, and running Premiere Pro on Windows, 13 minutes and 42 seconds, so that's our baseline. Now, interesting enough, you'll see that the, the further results I'm going to give you aren't that much faster, but what is faster is when you're actually running the computer. With 8 gigs, it never got to that 8 gig limit. That's because both operating systems and both programs started to save uh, your things that are in your RAM to your hard drive. So it didn't crash the computer, it doesn't max out the memory, it's compressing it, it's saving it, but everything gets really slow other than the export. So it's good that our operating systems are smart enough to do that now, uh, but you don't wanna be in that position. So let's look at 16 gigabytes. 16 gigabytes, we do see a good speed increase in Final Cut. Now we're no longer limited, we're not maxing out the memory, and uh, it does speed it up a little bit there. Uh, Premiere Pro and OS X, once again, we see an improvement there. And in Premiere Pro, we also, on Windows, we also see an improvement in times. So here, uh, it has more room to expand. We're using more of the RAM. It's compressing less, it's saving less. The computer is running smoother while this is being exported. So definitely you're gonna want at least 16 gigabytes. So let's look at 24. 24, uh, we're not seeing any increase. It's actually slightly slower in Final Cut, but that's probably within the margin of error. 
uh, Premiere Pro running on OS X, bam, we see a good improvement right there. Another improvement, Premiere Pro has taken advantage of the extra RAM. And on the Windows side, we're not seeing any difference. So here, if you're running Premiere Pro on OS X, you're getting some extra speed with that extra RAM. Looking at 32 gigabytes, not really any difference in Final Cut. Looking at Premiere Pro on OS X, also no difference. And Premiere Pro running on Windows, we're seeing an improvement once again. So Windows really likes that extra RAM. It lets it flex out a little bit uh, of the, for the program, the, everything that's happening gives it a little bit more space and it actually uses up to 18 gigabytes if you have 32. So Premiere Pro is very happy there. Now let's look at a shorter clip length. This is only 20 seconds for the export, but it's a lot harder for the computer. It's four 4K clips. They're scaled to 1080p size all inside of a 4K timeline. And each clip has two LUTs and film grain applied. Two of those clips are also running in reverse. So it's a lot of processing for a computer to do. Let's see what kind of a difference we have here. Looking at eight gigs Final Cut, we have a minute 41 seconds, Premiere Pro on OS X 356, and Premiere Pro on Windows 342. When we up it to 16 gigs, we, have, we see a small improvement in uh, Final Cut. We see a small improvement in Premiere Pro, and uh, we actually don't see any uh, improvement for running Premiere Pro on Windows. Uh, we're going to 24 gigs. We're seeing uh, basically no difference on Final Cut. We're seeing a small improvement on Premiere Pro running OS X and Windows running Premiere Pro. We see a small improvement there. Going to 32, no difference on Final Cut. If you're running Premiere Pro on OS X, we're also seeing no difference. And Windows running Premiere Pro, we're actually just going slightly slower. So I learned a few things from doing this testing. The people that say you need as much RAM as possible, it's gonna make a great impact on your video editing, they're simply wrong. We see that even the eight gigabyte system isn't that much slower. And when you're scrubbing through the timeline, uh, when you're doing different things like that, I didn't notice a huge difference. There is a difference, but it's not that much. And we know that that is not enough RAM for the video editing because both operating systems have to compress that memory, have to save it to your hard drive space. And when you actually start exporting, the whole computer gets really, really slow. Now, if you have enough memory, you don't have to go through those issues and uh, it still exports uh, pretty fast. You have a, a speed difference in some of the tests you guys saw. Now, if you're running Premiere Pro, it likes to have a little bit more breathing room. So on OS X, 24 gigs was the magic number. Above that, we didn't see any speed increases. And on Windows side of things, it really liked that 32 gigabyte mark. So keep that in mind. Uh, Final Cut is basically just happy with 16 gigabytes. Um, so that's, a, that's something for you guys. If you're on a budget and you're looking to either upgrade your CPU or get more RAM, definitely choose the CPU. Don't choose um, trying to max out your RAM. Uh, you definitely want to have a balanced system to maximize your video editing performance. So I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. If you guys are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. I have a video coming out uh, that's just going to look at different graphics cards and how graphics cards uh, make a difference for your video editing, going from a range of a $150 card all the way up to a $600 card. I tested about 10 graphics cards. So it's gonna be very interesting. If you guys have any questions, you guys can ask in the a description below, in the comment section below. If you guys wanna download the test that I used, there's a link in the video description. You guys can check out that link, download the files, not very large, it's both for Premiere Pro and for Final Cut, and see how your system compares. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.